Hi guys, my name is Ibukun Olwaremi and I'm a student at Rice University. I'm in the Biomedical Engineering program and with me is... Hi, uh, my name is Xavier Fernando. I am a professor at Electrical and Computer Engineering. Um, we're here with Professor Xavier today because we'd like to talk about IEEE, you know, graduate studies at Rice University and why students should be interested in graduate studies. So quickly, um, Professor, where did you complete your undergraduate, master's and PhD studies? Yeah. I did my undergraduate studies in Sri Lanka. Uh, I think it was 1987 to 92. And I did my master's in, in Thailand, actually, in Bangkok, Asian Institute of Technology. And I did my PhD in University of Calgary with uh, TR Labs uh, in Alberta. And then I joined Rice and in, immediately after my PhD in 2001. That, that's very awesome. Uh, so why did you decide to go for a PhD? Because we know PhD is a very big, you know, it's a big deal. For one to decide to go for a PhD, they have to be sure exactly. So wh yeah. why did you decide to go for a PhD? Yeah, to, <coughs> to be honest, actually, uh, everybody should pick uh, something that really suits their nature, their, their personality, their talents, their characteristics, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I have always been like academically very studious student. Like when I did my undergrad, I was I topped the batch, like the, became the first in the dean's list. Even my masters, I got the I was nominated for gold medal, and even during my PhD, I got a, a best paper award and all that. Mm -hmm. So I naturally I was more into academics, and before doing PhD, actually I worked for the industry. I was working for AT and T. Okay. AT&T Thailand for like uh, three years. Then I realized uh, actually I will do better in an academic environment compared to an industry environment okay. because that's that's my nature. I'm I'm more like an involved type person. Yeah. So I, I decided to do PhD and I I am so glad I made that decision because it rewarded me very well. That's that's amazing. So definitely for students if if they're unsure about whether to go for a PhD program or not, they want to examine their personality, their characteristics, and then if, it's, if it suits academic work, then they should go for it. Exactly, exactly. Like in our countries, everybody says you have to study, 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 right? <laughs> as much as possible. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend that because different people have different personalities. Yeah. For some people actually with undergraduate degree, they might go to industry, they might do very well. For some people, master's is a good option. But if you are very uh, specific, very uh, curious about certain topics, you have to go for PhD. That will pay you off. Thank you, sir. So, what made you decide to join Rice University? Because there are many schools in Canada. There's U of T, there's Waterloo, there's McMaster. But you decided to come to Rice, and there has to be a reason. That's a really good question, actually. Because immediately after my PhD, I got three or four interviews. Uh, but uh, Ryerson was very attractive because Actually, they gave me a really good offer at that time, and the Ryzen chair was very promising. Uh, actually, Professor Raymond Saignal, he was the one who interviewed me. So he was telling so much about Ryzen, and he was saying how Ryzen is growing very fast. Because at that time, they started hiring, and the university had a much fast, I mean, much brighter future compared to many other uh, schools, right? So that was one reason uh, why I, I joined Ryzen. And I think that's actually very true. Ryzen has grown at a very high pace in the last recent years. Yes. So um, students on campus are, you know, very interested in graduate studies, but some of them are very shy. They cannot approach their professors. Like, what can you, you know, say about graduate studies at Ryzen that would encourage students, you know, to, to apply to the programs? Um, I think uh, uh, Ryzen is an excellent place to do graduate studies, especially if you are a Ryzen undergrad. You already know the system. Right. You already know system, you already know how to do things compared to many international applicants. And you should strongly consider doing graduate studies, at least to the master's level. Because these days, just with a bachelor's degree, it's very hard to progress in the career. Because after five years, after 10, 20 years, if you look at your salary scales, the, the ladder in which you grow, actually with the graduate studies, your growth will be much faster compared to uh, undergraduate studies. So, and one <coughs> aspect uh, a lot of undergraduate students don't know is actually during while doing graduate studies you get paid. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I pay all my graduate students. Typically, my master's students get about sixteen thousand a year. My PhD students get from twenty to twenty-five thousand a year. Uh, so, com 
in contrast to undergraduate, in, during undergraduate studies, you will be paying for everything. Yes, that's true. <laughs> I know you are tired by the time you reach your fourth year. Yes. <laughs> but during, as a graduate student, you can actually start making money while studying. And the second important aspect is during graduate studies, you will take only a small number of courses. Mm -hmm. Like if you are doing masters, you will be taking only five courses, but you will be spending more than one year on working something that you really like, like doing your research, right? Yes. You will be doing a project, you will be working on that particular project day and night. So you feel very uh, like accomplished after yeah. you, you have done with your thesis. Yeah, sure. uh, so on the topic of research, what are your research interests? Like what, what areas do you do research in as a professor? Uh, I mainly work in wireless communications, mm -hmm. right? but uh, um, rather than doing just traditional type of research like modulation, coding, signal processing, I try to do slightly in a different way. Like I, uh, for example, I work with a, a company that provide communications to underground mines and tunnels. Okay. Right? So that was a very difficult environment, a lot of people don't want to get involved in that. Because uh, everything is different in underground compared to uh, overground environment. So you have to completely design system from the scratch. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's a difficult environment, but not only that, but it's also essential because a lot of miners die without proper communication equipment. That's true. Right? And uh, actually the recent laws require uh, you should be able to uh, pinpoint, like locate each miner mm -hmm. in case of a disaster. Mm -hmm. And they don't have proper uh, networks or communication facilities for that. So that's what we have been working on. And this not only uh, the application of uh, advanced communication technologies, but it's also serving the humanity and helping people. Yes. So that sure. makes it uh, it's more important. Okay. Right? Actually, I, I do a number of projects. This is just one of them. Just one of them. Okay. Yeah. Right. You, you could talk about some other ones. If some other projects as well. Like, yeah. For example, as I mentioned, I try to diversify my research, not just uh, in pure communication. Like, I, I did another project with Hydro One. Uh, that was actually providing, uh, you might have heard about electric cars, like uh, they are promoting electric cars big time, but one of the reasons why electric cars are not widely deployed is because people have anxiety about the range, how far you can go with an electric car. Also the price, right, is they are typically more expensive. So our project, uh, actually what we try to do is we try to provide wireless connectivity for these electric cars so that uh, you at any time you know, uh, actually the hydro one knows how many cars are on the street and they, they keep track of the cars and they can actually predict how much power these cars will need in certain time. Okay. So they also wanted to decide like optimum locations for charging stations in Toronto. So we actually we uh, used the city of Toronto map and we had like a number of electric cars and typical driving patterns and we actually suggested certain uh, best locations for the charging stations. Uh, likewise, uh, I, I do many different projects. It's a very interesting project you do, sir, and this seems to all like, you know, encompass communications and signals and all that, which, which is very interesting. Yes. So, are you, in, right now, are you interested in research assistants, master students, PhD students, are you, are you open to, you know, summer interns, you know, yes. students would love to apply if you... If you yeah, I'm always interested. Actually, Ryerson offer uh, summer research assistant program. Okay. Uh, I have taken many uh, research assistants during summer. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have typically done uh, good work actually okay. because they get really good training working with my graduate like PhD and uh, master's students. Okay. Uh, but also I am interested like I, I get res good research funding as you can see yeah. from my CV. So I also I am always interested in getting good like bright students who are open minded like who, who can handle challenges and who are willing to actually work in like different type of projects so that uh, that is not only useful to them, but also useful to the society. Mm -hmm. Not only that, they should be able to get a good job as well. Right? Yeah. So I'm always looking for students. Okay. That's, that's amazing. So if students are interested, they can just, how can they contact you or how do they take advantage of the opportunity? Do they go to the website? What's the, what's the best way to, to, to get, you know? Yeah, of course, my website is the first uh, point of contact. Okay. So I have my ISM Electrical Engineering website. Okay. Also, I have a Facebook page. All right. And ha I have my profile in the LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, so they can actually, through any of these me means, they can communicate with me. They can actually send me a quick question. Mm -hmm. And whenever a student uh, send me an email, I always reply. If they want to have an appointment, they want to talk to me. 
I am more than willing to uh, talk to them. Especially I am looking for really bright fourth year students who want to go for the graduate studies. Okay. Because recently we got uh, really good funding, like about $400,000 to again work in the underground communication area. Oh, so I'm always looking for grad students. That's good. We're, we're going to make sure this, the links to all these addresses are available on the video. Um, so <clears throat> what advice would you give to students in general that, that want to be successful? You know, academics can be very challenging at times. You might lose motivation, you know, in your third year, fourth year. But what, what's, what's something that you think would help you sustain all the way, even to do yeah. graduate studies, because it can be very yeah. challenging? It's a very good question. It's a very good. I can talk hours <laughs> on this topic only. Yeah. Because the thing is, I would say um, being a student is very tiring and challenging, but also it's a lot of fun because you will know only when you start working for a company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> right. So you because you get lots of freedom and you are you don't have to be that much uh, responsible in meeting uh, you know uh, deadlines and finishing mm -hmm. projects. But also, of course, being a student is difficult, but my uh, point is actually uh, the key for success is time management, right? Do whatever you have to do at that time, right? And I, I wouldn't say that you have to study, study, study 24-7. That's not the way to succeed. You study when you have to study, but when you study, you, you really be focused and be efficient so that you learn something, but after a while, then you should always take a break, go and do something that you like. Right? Okay. So, because that's how your brain relaxes mm -hmm. when you are happy, when you do something with something different, right? Mm -hmm. So, time management is essential. And uh, if you, the other thing is do something that you like, right? Don't, don't pick a subject or something because you are, uh, because of some other compulsion, mm -hmm. right? If, if your heart is not in your studies, if you don't really like something that you are doing, you tend to perform poorly. That's very natural, right? Mm -hmm. So pick something that you like. I, I, fortunately, engineering is a very interesting field. Mm -hmm. uh, so you all are in engineering, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so do something that you like and work hard and also have fun. All right. Thank you very much, sir. I think that wraps up the video for today. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for the interview.